Let's speak with Francine Jordan from the Vegan Society. Francine, good afternoon to you. Um, I'm imagining your team Miss Tomlinson here. <laughs> well, the Vegan Society kind of will always, of course, welcome any kind of initiative that encourages children to eat more fruits and vegetables um, and ultimately educates them about the benefits of a vegan diet, not only for animals, but um, health and environment too. So I think, yeah, we're, we are probably siding with the head teacher. However, I don't know the ins and outs necessarily. I don't know if there was a consultation between uh, teachers and parents, but perhaps that's kind of where yeah, it's yeah. really gone wrong. But the, the principle of getting kids to eat healthier would be something I, you would clearly endorse. And if that can be vegetarian or preferably vegan, then that would be even better, right? Yeah, absolutely. When you when did you when did you become a vegan, Francie? So I became a vegan in 2016. So okay. I wasn't brought up vegan. Right. I actually was brought up on corned beef sandwiches. Well, I was going to say that's what I was going to say. Yeah, well, I think that's enough to make anybody go vegan, isn't it? Really, <laughs> when you consider what a corned beef sandwich actually is. But I also remember those as a uh, as a kid. Um, but I mean, wait, think back to your school days. If they took the turkey Twizzlers off the menu. And those little nuggets and all that tasty stuff, you'd have been devastated, wouldn't you? What, what, however environmentally concerned you might be, kids aren't ready for that level of education, surely. I think it's changed. The the kind of school meal options have changed significantly since I was at school. I was at like primary school in the nineties. Yeah. Um, where that was kind of the the thing. It was turkey twizzlers, chicken nuggets, turkey dinosaurs, whatever. So I think we have moved away from that in a really positive direction. And I do think there are conversations around making school meals healthier. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, obviously, the vegan society would like to see a fully vegan world, but we're also realistic and we know that people aren't necessarily always open to change. That's why I think yeah. having a conversation with the parents in the first place would have been, you know, the first step. But children actually when you speak to children about animals and we, and we do tell children, you know, don't be horrible to animals, look after animals, be nice to animals, but then they go home and eat it. So there is like a slight kind of disconnect there. Mm. Um, and I, myself, I asked to go vegetarian when I was eight years old and my mum said no. And that was the end of the conversation. So I think <laughs> the, on, positive thing about, <laughs> the positive thing about this is, you know, it might encourage a conversation between parents and children. The school yeah. isn't telling these children to be vegetarian 24 seven. I think it's about six hours of the day that they're just saying go without a ham sandwich. So I don't necessarily think it's that extreme. Have you noticed this at the vegan system? It's all about who, obviously any interest group like your own, which, which is great that different groups exist. And and that's the fabulous thing of living in a democracy that we have all sorts of different views and you can bring them to the table. And naturally you want to advance and showcase the, the values and the benefits as well. Uh, of a vegan diet so it's important that I suppose and I'm sure you guys you know work very hard to make sure you can educate without preaching there's all of that I mean it would be no good well you could give an interview to the Guardian but it would be a bit like you know telling the Pope to turn Catholic wouldn't it it would be a sort of almost a futile exercise because but you take my point so and with kids obviously you know children are quite understanding of the world in a way that perhaps hadn't happened even up till you know, quite recently, uh, but simultaneously, would it have not been better to start with the veggie option rather than going, you know, for for sort of full vegan? So I think, um, as I understand it, it is actually just a vegetarian. So it's not that they're taking away eggs and dairy; it's actually just meat options okay. um, in the canteen and and um, in lunch boxes. And ultimately, I actually think it's a really good thing. You know, we're facing an obesity crisis. There's actually things with people struggling with cost and a vegan diet, especially a whole food plant based diet is one of the cheapest and quickest ones that you can you can follow. Again, I think it's maybe just that resistance to change. Um, And ultimately, what I see as a positive is that from this is that, you know, the children that are at nursery and primary school now, they're the ones that are going to be left with a very sorry state of a planet if we don't start to make some changes. Yeah. Um, and if that means they grow up to be government leaders and scientists and things like that that are fighting for the environment, that could actually be a really good thing. Is that, is that the aim, a vegan prime minister? <laughs> oh, I would love that. I mean, Kwasi Kwarteng, I'm hoping he goes vegan sometime soon. He's kind of hinted at it in the past. Yeah, he hasn't that. made the full transition, but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, a vegan prime minister would be amazing. Indeed. We will watch with interest. Francine, thank you. Francine Jordan, the Vegan Society.